Here I have a uh, Husqvarna 21E and uh, you may have seen a previous video where I went through the mechanical um, aspects of this machine and also in that video I mentioned that I would do a basic usage video. So, so let's get it on the bench and I'll show you how to use this classic Husqvarna 21E. This particular um, machine is in pretty good nick, it's got a little bit of wear here, um, there's a crack on the this plastic cover here, a couple of cracks. That's mainly from um, over tightening the screws and not aligning the cover before it's screwed in properly. I might show you that uh, later in the video, how that can happen. Um, yeah, so quite a nice tidy little machine. So we'll be starting by um, just uh, showing the bobbin winding first of all. Uh, before we go too much further I thought I'd just quickly show you the manual. Uh, this is the operating manual and um, yeah it starts off by saying um, you know that you can flip these up for reference uh, during reading the manual so while you're reading the manual if you have those little cards in the uh, on the front and the back pages are uh, the covers there you can um, you know continue to read the manual whilst referring to the different parts of the machine so I thought that was quite an ingenious little idea um, so they start by going through the attachments and welcoming you and thanking you for buying the machine and whatnot. There's a table of con contents there. Just starts you off at the basics, you know, uh, selecting thread and needles, um, installing the needle, the bobbin and bobbin case, bobbin winding, and um, t tension, thread tensions. Then it uh, shows you about the extra slow sewing mode which I'll show you installing the flatbed extension plate some of the extra feet and whatnot so um, yeah a really nice comprehensive manual and really nice clear photographs there too they certainly don't make manuals like these anymore that's for sure and um, then it starts getting into the, using the cams pattern stitches, uh, embroidery and the like, darning, eyelets, things like that. And um, more darning, etc. And then goes right to um, maintenance, so cleaning, oiling. I've gone through this in a previous video, which I'll link in the uh, description down below and just what you get in the accessories etc here so yeah nice little manual there and um, I also came across uh, this brochure here which is a uh, brochure for the Husqvarna automatic and it unfolds here to show you the outstanding features jam proof shuttle, uh, the micro adjustment for stitch length, automatic tension control, easy operation, easy darning, smooth starting, built in light, pattern cams, carry case, accessories and attachments, extension plate and suppressed for radio and TV which is uh, electrical suppression, uh, interference suppression, reduction gear and free arm. So they were, um, it's pretty fancy there, there's the other side there where it goes through the, the models here. You've got the free arm 19A, another free arm 8. So the 19A's got the zigzag and um, needle positioning feature, whereas the 8 is just stitch length and um, drop feed I think that is, yeah. And these two machines here, the 51A and the 71, they, they're flatbed machines, so they actually, they're actually designed to sit down into a table. 
So um, almost semi-industrial, I would say that one by the look of it. But it looks like you could um, attach a uh, a bench-mounted motor and a, you know have the belt come up to the hand wheel there for semi-industrial use. And then um, the brochure opens up here. And uh, this is what a modern sewing machine really looks like. A joy to operate, a delight to own. Husqvarna Automatic. So, yeah, quite nice um, uh, advertisement brochure there. Nice buttonholes. You can sew your own buttons on with the machine. Zip, fastening. Uh, Tricot zigzag stitch for... Um, the likes of the stretch materials and your overcasting stitch, attach lace and gathering. So yeah, quite a nice um, little find that. I really like these, uh, this sort of uh, ephemera that you know goes with the machines, the brochures and the manuals. This is the full service manual for the class 21, 51, 71 and 7 machines I found in my stash of manuals. So it runs through um, troubleshooting some of the most common machine troubles, um, recommended order in which to check the machine thoroughly and quickly. So it goes, and then it gets into the you know the real nitty gritty uh, with adjusting end play in the upper shaft, things like that, and all the uh, different adjustments that you might need or would need for a full service. So yeah, and that's quite a quite a good find. The power cable just comes directly out of the back there and um, plugs into your power there and the foot controller there just um, plugs the other end there plugs in here uh, it doesn't matter which way it goes either way works fine Bob and windings fairly straightforward so just load a um, thread spool onto here and then through the eyelet there up here uh, and down through the uh, around this little tongue here so from um, left to right as you're looking at the front of the machine and then underneath the little tensioner disc here and we get a bobbin put that onto here now when you install the bobbin it automatically disengages the machines so the needle's not going up and down the machine's not turning it's just turning the bobbin winder okay so we'll just wind onto there and just trim this little tail off here and um, away we go so sometimes it's quite a good idea just to put your finger very lightly on here to stop this from rattling around and that can bounce up and down and fall off, fly off and the thread can come untangled from here. You do, definitely don't want to be putting too much tension here though because it can stretch, it stretches the thread while it's winding it onto the bobbin so when it's coming off the bobbin it will want to gather and um, you don't want that while you're sewing so just very, just to stop it from doing that. And then when the bobbin's full there, just stop there. So the bobbin case and bobbin is accessed through the um, this door here on the free arm here, and um, you'll see that there's a little a little clip, a uh, little lever here. So when you when you grab um, the bobbin case, uh, the lever will go in, and you can that'll unlatch the latch here and allow you to remove the bobbin case. So it's really just a matter of pulling the bobbin case out like that and installing installing the new bobbin here, inserting here. So I normally would um, I would have the thread coming off in a clockwise direction there. Okay, and it's going to go through this slot here and under the spring. And you'll see there's two little uh, fingers either side here. So the thread is to go in between those. You'll see that when I thread it. So put the bobbin in 
bring the thread into the slot there and then pull it so it clips underneath and comes out between the two fingers like so and then just give the bobbin thread a pull it should come out nice and smoothly and you can see the bobbin there is turning in a clockwise direction okay and so if you pull this here you can feel if there's any snags or um, you know you would, you would pick up if there's a bent bobbin um, or buckled bobbin or if there is snags catching the side there but that's nice and smooth that's as it should be and then um, you want to place the bobbin with this finger here pointing directly up and just make sure that stays up before you click it in and you can hear that click you could also just hold the latch put it in until it's in it's sometimes a good idea to give this a, a good quick sort of pull like that and because if the bobbin case isn't quite latched in you think it is but it's not quite it's going to pull it out and that's in well there okay so you can just close the door there's a little uh, little cut out here so that the thread doesn't trap in the door like if it was over there it might trap over here cut there so that's pulling nice and freely there so next thing is the um, installing the needle so the um, needle you'll notice on most domestic machines uh, have a flat on them on the shank this top end here that's the shank and this is the blade of the needle down here with the eye down here so on the shank there's a flat so if I turn that you'll see that the other side is actually uh, rounded it might be quite hard to pick up on camera there but if you look end on you'll see that there's a flat on here so the flat goes to the rear of the machine the flat is now at the rear and the rounded parts at the front and then just install that straight up you might need to loosen the screw a little bit and make sure that the needle actually hits the stopper so you know it should freely go up into into there if if it doesn't uh, maybe the screw is a little bit too tight or there's something jammed in there um, but that should hit the there's a little metal stopper you can actually feel it it hits it's quite a positive um, you know feel there when it stops so just make sure you're still holding that up and tighten the uh, locking nut uh, screw there the needle locking screw so just to give you some perspective here the uh, the thread is going to come from the rear here I'll turn the machine to show you that uh, and down through the mechanism here so if we turn the machine around we want to start from here so it's still threaded for the bobbin winding there so I'll just remove that there and just place the uh, spool on there and you come across to the uh, first eyelet here on the back here okay and then comes across to the second eyelet there on the front and then down and around the uh, thread dial there the tension dial then you want to make sure you come in behind um, the spring here, that spring, that spring there. So it comes down and over there. So what it's doing is it's coming down, around, and up and over that spring. So when you put it under this bar here and over, it should, if I put the presser foot down, put a bit of tension on here, it should, when you pull the thread here, should act like that with a little bit of tension pulling through from here okay and then from right to left through the take-up lever there you'll notice there's two holes in the take-up lever that's for um, twin needle 
So, you know, I normally thread into the uh, the bottom hole, the front front hole there for single needle. And then just through this eyelet here, then around this eyelet here, just above the needle, and then front to back through the needle eye there. And then we just want to do one turn uh, of the machine, one revolution to pick up the bobbin thread, like so. And that's all set to go there. When you do that, when you turn a machine and um, are getting it ready for, you know, uh, sewing a brand new seam, when you do turn over one revolution, you should always make sure that the uh, take up lever here uh, comes down while you're turning the machine and then back up to its full top position there. Okay, so I'm turning, picking the thread up and then back right up to, this should always be in the top position when you're starting a new seam. Now just a quick um, go through these uh, controls here. So we've got a um, stitch length Okay, so that's um, zero stitch length there. Half, one, two, right up to four. So that's the longest stitch. So for normal sewing, I'd say start at around three. You've got a uh, reversing lever here for back stitching. Uh, now one thing to note with this particular model, it can catch you out if you push this in and it can actually stay in because the uh, the button actually drops down and that's that's a feature so you can leave the machine in reverse if you want to but what can happen is you quickly um, go to do a back stitch and it can actually jam in there or well, you think it's jammed but just a matter of flicking the button up that way that releases it again so it's quite easy to um, accidentally when you're back stitching to for it to stick in so when you're reversing, it's probably quite a good idea to actually do it from the bottom, hold from the bottom and, and just sort of almost provide a little bit of upward. Whereas you, if you're doing it down, it's going to lock like that. Okay, and then um, stitch width. So this is the, the width of the zigzag, this one here, zero right up to the widest four. Okay, and that is the drop feed, which is actually seized on this one. I've really only just got this machine out of storage, so I just gave it a quick clean um, and a quick oil, but that's, that's seized there. I'm going to need to uh, deal with that. Okay, so um, ready to... Uh, so, oh, and this one here is your left needle... Uh, and center and right positions and there's a little also a little knob here that's for selecting the different pattern stitches for the cams right so um, I'll show you a bit about the cams soon but just to start with we'll do a basic um, seam here so I'm just going to start with um, straight stitch I'll set on three now this this material was actually part of a sheet and it's um, it's been hemmed along the top here and that that's actually uh, eight layers of fabric there and another eight there, I've doubled it over. So this part here is uh, 16 layers of cotton uh, sheeting and four layers there and two there. So you'll hear the machine as it goes through the thicker materials there. So starting on the four there. Yes. Now one thing about these machines is they're um, very easy to control speed wise. You know they don't they don't sort of take off on you. They're um, quite controllable. I think that was shown in the um, in the brochure there about the uh, ease of control. So 
that's getting through the thicker part there. So when we're turning a, a 90 degree corner, or any corner really, um, you bring the machine down so that the needle bar here is uh, comes to bottom dead centre, so you're always turning the machine uh, in the correct direction, which for this uh, particular machine is when your hand is on top of the uh, hand wheel, you should always be pulling it towards you, so it comes towards you like that, so always turn that way. So that's the um, direction of operation there. So you should never turn a machine backwards. Now that corner, so what we want to do is we want to come to needle right to the bottom and then just up say a quarter of an inch, turn and then off you go again. Now, stitch length is, you know, probably a little bit long if you're just sewing um, clothing, whatnot. So probably I'll just I'm going down to about two and a half on the stitch length here. This is the big lump. We'll see how that handle that. Looks pretty good actually. Normally in the thicker materials you might expect to see little loopies. Uh, little loops uh, generally would indicate that the top thread's a little bit um, too loose for the thickness of the fabric and just needs tightening up uh, top tension a little bit to pull those loops back more towards the upper side there. But that looks pretty good. Um, so to do zigzag so I'm going to go to a, a full width um, zigzag, so that's up to four here. And generally when you're moving this here, you want to make sure that the needle is out of the work, because what can happen is if I put the needle in there and turn this um, width lever here, so I'm doing the stitch width, what can happen is the needle when it's in the fabric there can actually you know uh, try and pull the material sideways or uh, if it can't pull the material sideways it'll actually bend the needle so yeah it's not not ideal and um, yeah so just be aware of that so, so now we're on the full width stitch look pretty good there. Through the thicker part there. Top tension may be a little bit tight. I'll just back that off a little bit. So I'm down to four on the top tension. And noticing that the material is sort of slipping around a little bit under the foot here. So you probably want to um, increase the foot pressure just to get a little bit more pressure down on the foot there. So that's done in here. So this is the um, pressure uh, adjustment here and I can feel just by putting my finger under this presser foot here and raising it that there's not a lot of pressure on there. Um, so just definitely need more pressure for this sort of work here. So you would adjust that for um, you know lighter weight fabrics, shear fabrics, uh, maybe if you're trying to stop um, you know ply, sh ply shift on to materials uh, to stop the uh, top and bottom layer from uh, being uh, fed through at different rates. Uh, you know the uh, machine will want to push the top layer towards you and um, uh, so if you're, you're uh, piecing together quilt tops or things like that, you might want to um, release this foot pressure a little bit and um, 
Uh, that also saves the need for a walking foot machine too. Uh, walking foot, you know, will help to um, keep the two uh, pieces of material even, but um, also you can get around it just by loosening the foot pressure there. So, um, hmm. say hello to Molly. She's just decided to come and say hello. So the um, adjustment here is so if I go towards if I uh, go towards the front here, turn towards the front, you'll see this bar dropping. That's low pressure, so not much pressure there. If I turn towards the back of the machine, keep going up, you'll see this rising, and um, that as it gets higher and higher puts more and more pressure so I can feel there's quite a bit more pressure there it'll go quite high there so that that's probably about right it's a little bit of um, trial and error there so yeah just um, see how you go really uh, on a piece of scrap material or if you find you're having uh, trouble with feeding just uh, take uh, a look at your um, pressure there, foot pressure That's not helpful. No. Okay. Yeah, that's that's feeling a bit a bit more solid there. Not, it's, it's not sliding so much there. Okay. So um, if you want to do a narrower zigzag, you bring the needle back out and move the cat somehow. Anyway. So I'm going to adjust this lever down, so I might just take it down to two. It's a narrow zigzag. Okay. And then we can do the likes of uh, some satin stitching. So we'd use the uh, presser foot that's designed for satin stitching. And that has a um, small cutout in behind the needle area here that sort of accommodates the thickness of the satin stitching. So um, let's just quickly swap this um, uh, foot over so I can show you how to swap the feet out. So just lift the presser foot, undo the screw there. You don't have to take it right out, although sometimes it's actually easier. And um, Get rid of the cat fur. Oh. And then just install. So there's the, um, the little notch there goes into there. Tighten that. And then we're ready for a bit of satin stitching. Okay, so for satin stitching, you know, that's really depends what you want to achieve, but normally um, you would go very low on the stitch length here, so get down to maybe 0.5. Uh, that again, it's trial and error, and let's stick with maybe we'll go part way up to say three. That's not quite satin stitching, so we'll come down a little bit more in the stitch length. So I'm about between 0 and 0.5 there now. Nice and fast too, these machines, I like these. Uh, yeah, the, the thread tension's not right uh, for satin stitching, it needs adjustment. I'll probably just um, get away with loosening the tension a little bit here. Could even go a little bit lower in the stitch length, so I'm one notch off zero. So while I'm showing you that um, satin stitching, 
I thought I'd uh, also take the opportunity to show you the uh, pattern cam here. So these are also useful for um, sewing um, satin stitching. So there's um, several other cams available. But the, yeah, I've got a C. C uh, with an I actually, C1 I think that is, A1. And so I think there's A, B and C, and there's an A1, B1 and a B, uh, sorry, C1 as well. Uh, so yeah, I've got um, A1 in here. Generally there should be a, uh, a card like this here. So what this does is, um, you know, you can choose what pattern you'd like uh, to do. So for instance, if we wanted to do this sort of wavy pattern here, uh, it tells you here that it's can be. You set the uh, stitch length to 0.3. You set the uh, oh, the indicate the actual uh, cam selector to number two. I'll show you that in a second. And then the width set to two as well. So this little guide helps you with that. So let's put cam B in. And that's done by uh, first of all, you have to set the width to zero. Um, otherwise the cam won't come out. So set the stitch width to zero there. Put cam, oh there's a uh, there's a slot here too for this little um, locator here to slide into. So just line that up. B. So we've got B installed. Okay, so um, let's go back around the front here. The selector that um, I was referring to here and is also referred to um, when it points to this here being set to number two, that's your uh, stitch selector. So this selects the different types of stitches. So when I said to have that fully pushed in to release the cam at the back, that was on number five. Okay. And then so we, but we want to select number two for this wavy sort of satin stitch here. So let's see what we get here. Uh, put the stitch uh, width back on wide as well on number four. And there you can see we're getting the wavy stitches. So you can have a wee play around. Uh, let's try, I'm selecting one on the cam selector here. So generally to change, um, to change the cam selection, it's quite hard to do, if not impossible, to change that unless you switch the width down here to zero. Okay go to one and then back up to the full width. So I do that every time I change this here. So just be aware of that. So this is number number one. Number one can be. Okay. Now we'll try number three. Bring the needle out when you change these two. So needles up, width to zero, selecting number four, width back to four. And let's try number five there. Yeah, okay, five is five zigzag again. It's just standard zigzag. Uh, also, while I'm here, I'll show you the uh, left, center, and right positioning. Okay, so I'm going to be referring to this 
dial here, left, center, and right. So let's start with um, position left. So what that's going to do is going to zigzag. I'm on uh, stitch width two. Uh, so this makes no difference if you're on the full width because it's just going to do full width no matter where the selector is left, center, or right. It's just going to do the full width. But if you've got the width down on two or around about there, uh, what it'll do is it'll throw between the left and the center. And then if I change to the middle, it's going to go either side of middle, but only two millimeters, two width. And then the right goes between the right and the middle. Uh, I'll put the width right back down on zero. I'll bring the stitch length up to say two and a half for normal sewing. And you can see that the, um, the machine sewing in the middle there. And if we choose the left position, you'll see it's sewing just on the left there. And likewise for the right. Um, you know, while I'm here, maybe I should just quickly show you that. Zip foot attachment. Oh, looks like you just use it on center, I would say. So left's gonna hit the foot, that's no good. Right's too far away, center. Center's ideal for using the um, zip foot. Yeah. So that just allows you to, um, you know, get close to a zip there if you're sewing a zip. Like that, you know. Um, also, you know, if you're butting, uh, if you're butting right up against a, you know, another seam, you want to get really close in here. You know, you're, uh, you're going to get really close into that seam there. Let's have a look at uh, Cam C, shall we? Just going to put the selector back on five, stitch width to zero, just releasing the cam again, and putting in the C cam. Okay, I assume the C cam position five will be zigzag as well. It looks like that's common across all the cams, but let's just let's just see here. Stitch width back to four, stitch length down to near zero. Yeah, so again, number five is just standard zigzag. Pro looks like for all the cams. So let's try uh, four. What do we get? move to a new area here. Uh, let's try three. There you go. So yeah, who needs an electronic machine when you've got all these pattern cams, eh? Doesn't do fancy lettering like the electronics do though. Uh, okay, let's try two. like a scallop type stitch and one yep. okay uh, so next thing to show you is uh, probably just the the buttonhole so set the um, selector I'll set the selector again down to five because that's zigzag. That's generally standard for buttonholing. Um, no matter what cam you've got in there, it won't matter. And then um, I'll swap the feet over. So we've got so we've got a, um, a buttonhole foot here, and that's got a little guide here that um, helps you you know, with the um, length of your uh, buttonhole there. So, you know, you would normally mark out your start position for your buttonhole. I won't go into um, positioning buttonholes in this video, but you, you would start on your start point and then, um, you know, set this to the uh, length of the required buttonhole as a guide. So 
remove the uh, that's the satin stitching foot put the buttonhole foot on so uh, first of all you know needle left uh, stitch length down fairly low one notch above zero bring the um, stitch width past two and just engage the stopper and go back down until it stops which should be on two won't go past there and start sewing okay so this is the first bar of the buttonhole down the left hand side okay. go as far as the uh, stopper here so the buttonhole is about level with the stopper or guide and then you turn the machine over until the needle is down in the work in the right hand throw. So it's throwing left, right, left, right. Lift the press foot 180. Foot down. And um, then bring the needle out uh, up to three and a half here and drop the feed. So this turn this one. Do the bar, about three stitches. Bring, bring the feed back up, turn this back down to the stopper, which is two. Until you get to the end of the buttonhole. Needle out, up to three and a half, drop the feed. Do the bottom bar. Then release the stopper, so you can go back to zero. Locking stitch. A few stitches there. And there's the finished buttonhole. So I'll just quickly do that again. So we go uh, stitch with two, put in the stopper, sew the left hand side, ah, put the feed dogs back up. <laughs> okay, so. Feed dog, back up towing, back to the guide, needle in the right position, turn, needle up on three and a half width, drop the feed, do the top bar, bring the feed back up, back down to two on the width, the other bar, uh, needle out up to four drop the feed, do the other bar, um, bring the stitch width back to zero, lock the stitch, and voila, there's a um, completed buttonhole there. I also uh, mentioned earlier that I was going to um, show you about this uh, cover here, what can happen with this cover. You'll notice there's a little um, a lug here and two little lugs here. So the two little lugs, they locate into these holes. But what can happen is um, you put it in and these two lugs here will hit against the side and, and leave the uh, cover sort of sticking out a little bit here. So this gap is not closed up. And what can happen is um, you get these two screws in here and pull those tight and it bends it bends the uh, two edges in and can cause this um, these to snap you definitely don't want to be over tightening these screws it can cause all sorts of pressure but what you do is you just push down here and you'll see it's clipped in this is another machine by the way it's um, a broken bit there but see there push it in then just um, you know tighten those screws not too tight um, you'd also notice that there's a little um, oiler here some machines you'll find that that's missing this little oiler and what that does is it points this uh, down onto a little um, felt pad here for lubrication so if this is present it's fine just to put a couple of drops in the two drops will come down here and fall out the end onto um, the felt pad where it's supposed to go. But if this is missing, if the little um, tube's missing, 
and that's on there. Temptation is to squirt oil in there, um, which is really bad because oil will end up, you know, on, uh, on the belts where it's not supposed to be, cause all sorts of problems. Be aware that if that little tube is not present on your machine, don't put oil straight in there. Take this, take these screws out. Just two screws. And um, just get your oil can and you want to go, there's a little felt pad. You want to go onto that little felt pad and behind there, just maybe three or four drops. You don't want to um, over, you don't want to saturate it and, and keep oiling. It's going to uh, cause oil to fall down where it's not wanted. Um, but I would, you know, get the get that close to sort of saturation, or just if you're not sure, just three or four drops would probably do it. If it already looks moist and it's got oil on it, I wouldn't bother. Just leave it. So um, you just be aware of that little trap there. Right, the uh, attachments here come in a nice little uh, two-tier box here. So. Uh, I've been through the uh, satin stitching, the satin stitching foot, the darning and the buttonhole. Um, so we've got a, um, a felling, felling foot here, so or otherwise known as a hemming foot. So it curls the fabric in under itself for um, edging. And that looks like a uh, button sewing foot. So the foot sits on the uh, the button there so you can line the holes up. This little attachment sits on the um, throat plate or the needle plate and um, is for doing eyelets and this is for twin needle operation. This foot it's got little grooves underneath it as well and you've just got the uh, little screwdriver and um, is for a uh, raised uh, seam and then we've got the uh, pattern cams which I've shown you, a little cleaning brush, another felling foot with a probably a wider uh, bite there, a little original um, Husqvarna branded uh, twin needle not sure what state that would be in or if it's ever been used but that'll that looks like a um, made in Germany I would say that's rebranded Smets needles so just rebranded for Husqvarna there uh, the bobbins now these are a specific bobbin for the model so if you go into a, um, a like a big chain store type uh, place we have a, a chain store called Spotlight here in New Zealand uh, and ask for bobbins for your sewing machine more than likely you're going to get the wrong ones given to you because the you know you'll probably end up with something for a singer or you know uh, a banana or something or you know some other make and um, uh, these are specific for the Husqvarna so make sure you get the right bobbins um, little uh, edge guide or um, quilting guide and another little cleaning brush. Yeah, that's about it really. It's a nice little uh, kit, comes with it. So um, attaching the base um, flatbed is pretty pretty straightforward. There's a, um, a little stand here that flips down. So once you get um, the machine on, there's a little locator a little locator there locates um, over here and there's also a pin that flips into this hole here so you just come across here there's a little lever you pull the little lever here to pull that pin back come across and then the, let the lever go and it locates into there and then just the little stand under here just put the little the little foot and there's the uh, flat bed so quite a nice big working area especially if you're doing that um, 
uh, embroidery or um, quilting or darning, things like that, quite handy. Setting up for darning, it's pretty straightforward. Um, open the faceplate here and you just push the um, this little lever here. This way. And what that does is it releases the um, foot pressure. So there's hardly any foot pressure there. And then um, we'll get the darning foot. This is the darning foot here. So um, this goes over the needle, uh, the little bar on the needle bar, and this attaches to the uh, foot bar here. So that little loop goes over this little bar here. It's probably easier to do that first, and then you just pull down, and um, tighten this onto here. So now the foot's attached here, and we should be able to just really push that. Uh, for, for starting darning, I normally would, um, you know, pass the thread down through the presser foot hole there. Okay, so like that. So you've got your bobbin thread coming straight out of the uh, throat plate hole, or needle plate hole, and then you've got your needle thread coming down through the foot hole and out the side. So that's pretty much ready for starting off there and when we turn over you can see that the needle allows the uh, well, the needle bar allows that to drop and clamp the material and when the needle comes up it pulls this lever up like that and um, allows the material to be moved so let's give you a quick demonstration on that so you can um, use this for uh, darning or um, uh, quilting. material there it's uh, got a f quite a few layers there that's why it's making that funny noise but yeah so you can just free so for darning you might go back and forward don't quote me on that I'm not an expert darner so to go back to normal sewing you just um, remove the darning foot So, might be easier to take the whole screw right off there, might make it a bit easier. Okay. And um, let's just put the standard foot back on. Okay. But what you've got to remember is that um, you know, you're still set to darning there as well. Oh, uh, what I didn't show you also is when you go into darning mode you should drop the feed dogs, so that's this um, screw that right down that drops your feed dogs okay um, so bring your feed dogs back up and then to get your foot pressure back to where it should be you push this so I'm holding that with my thumb this lever here and pushing on this and that brings it back up to what you had it preset at, I'm pretty sure. Let's try it. Yeah, brings it back to where you were preset with your... Yeah. It's quite a nice design actually. So if you've got it set very light and you release the uh, tension for or the pressure for darning, well then when you push this again it just clips back to where it was. It is an ingenious little mechanism. Same again. Back to where it was. Yeah.
quite nice I like it the only other thing really to show you is the um, the dual speed mechanism or not the mechanism the uh, feature so normal sewing speed is you know quite quite fast but if I pull this um, where the bobbin winder is here you pull this out and that puts it into a low a low speed high torque So although the motor is spinning very fast, it's uh, geared down with a, a reduction gear and um, you know, just slowly turns this wheel. More torque there too, so uh, better for punching through thicker materials and it also gives you a lot of control. So if we just uh, quickly thread up there. We're on the low speed. You also notice on the low speed that the hand wheel feels tighter to turn as well. Um, that's just because of the gearing. Let's get a uh, stitch length up here. Back on center. So you can get, um, you know, a really good low speed. A lot of control. So flat out. That's flat out. You know, so if you're teaching someone to sew, I mean, that's just brilliant. And um, also brilliant for going through the heavy, thicker materials. Yep. And then I'll engage normal again. Just push the uh, that clutch back in. Really nice. Quite nicely balanced too. These machines. This machine's actually got a little bit of a um, slightly worn belt, so it does tend to jam in position from time to time, but it's just a matter of giving it a bit of a helping hand on the hand wheel there. I mean, it's bouncing a little bit, but it's not too bad. Pretty good for that speed, you know, for a domestic machine. Reasonably quiet too. So, yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed that video there on the Husqvarna Automatic 21E, made in Sweden. So uh, brilliant engineering. Uh, take a look at my other video where I go through the mechanicals. I'll link it in the description down below. And um, yeah, thanks a lot for watching.